state today's date, your name, your birthday, and how long you've lived in Hernando County. Okay. Today is September the 19th, the 18th, 18th. September the 18th. Uh, it's a Wednesday. My name is Charlotte Wernicke Lee. My birthday is March 29th, 1933, and I have lived in Hernando County all my life. And what part of the county uh, did you live in? I live in um, the southeastern part of the county in the Spring Lake area, not in the village of Spring Lake itself, but uh, in the area there. My family um, moved to that part of the county when I was in 1939, when I was six years old, uh, my dad and his brother had a dairy on the property that was uh, on 50 East, where the Coca-Cola bottling plant, plant was. Oh. And um, they decided to uh, expand their operation to include cattle, and so they needed more property to farm to provide the feed for the cows and the pasture. And it was available on the old uh, Petaway tract, which was a square mile, a whole square mile um, from present day Old Trilby Road north to State Road 50, and then a mile east to Baseball Pond Road and in extending out to State Road 50. That's where I started school at Spring Lake School. At that time, it was um, a two-story brick building, but it had at one time been a three-story building and housed all 12 grades. And, um, but when I went there, there were just, there were just three classrooms on the first floor. The second floor was a library and an auditorium that had a stage on it for kids' plays and, and whatever else we did at that time. We had three, the first three grades were in one room, and then the fourth, fifth, and sixth were in another room, and the seventh and the eighth were in the third room room and those grades were taught by the principal uh, who at that time was a lady named Miss Ruby Lee. There were no relation. <laughs> but uh, what was it like back then? She had a desk in front and had um, a bench, a long wooden bench that each class was called to when it was their turn to recite or, or have instruction or so forth. And while that class was there, the other two classes were had doing homework or doing their classwork that they needed. We had the old fashioned desk like you see in the museum for the, the benches where the students sat was in front of the desk that the student in back used okay. and um, had a lot of fun doing that because it had the old ink wells in it and and it was of course first second and third grade didn't have any ink in their ink wells they had pencils <laughs> but when we got up into the upper grades um, then it was when the ink got to be a problem sometimes was that exciting to graduate yeah. to the grade when you got the inkwell? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was. There was a, a big bell on the fire escape outside of the north windows. And it, wh whoever was a good student that day was allowed to go outside and ring the bell for recess time, for lunch time. And so that was an incentive. Speaking about the Ayers family, mm -hmm. um, Miss the the mother uh, in the group. I, I never knew the I never knew her husband, mm -hmm. but uh, one of her daughters, Lucille, was um, a school teacher, 
And at the time I was in school, she she had taught at Spring Lake at one time, but she was in teaching in Brooksville then, teaching eighth grade English. And she knew oh, the quality of the classes that we had. So when the Spring Lake kids came to Brooksville, she spent an awful lot of extra time with us, catching us up on. Oh, well, that's great. And that's the first time I ever knew that there was such a thing as a noun or a pronoun or any kind of sentence structure. And and so she taught it. She taught us how to diagram sentences, and oh, that was just fascinating to me because I'm a reader anyway, and I, so and it prepared me for entering high school and uh, being under the tutelage of Miss Ruth Hoffman. She she was a a hard teacher. Only if you weren't paying attention and didn't turn your homework in. So if I hadn't had Lucille's instruction in the eighth grade, I would have found it very difficult. I always in, I always enjoyed school. I had no problem with school, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is a blessing. And if today I could still go to school, I would be a perpetual student. In fact, I am. A perpetual student. Mm -hmm. This that you're doing here is fascinating me. I've forgotten the year, but the year that Fuller Warren was inaugurated as governor for the state of Florida, we were invited to participate in his inaugural parade. Okay. Well, we were told from Brooksville to Tallahassee back then, mm -hmm. 19 was not finished. You had to go to Dunellen on 41 mm -hmm. and cross over to 19 at Otter Creek. Okay. Wow. So it took a little while to get there. Yeah, I can imagine. So it had to be there by 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh. We had to leave Brooksville at 4.30 or 5 o'clock. Wow. That's right? early. Yeah. Yeah. So we took two buses because, uh, you know, we had to have room for all the instruments and everything. And we were told that uh, they would have lunch provided for us. They were going to have barbecue sandwiches and all kind of good stuff. So when we got up there and we went through the, went through the parade, went to get our lunch, everything had just gone. Oh, no. And you no all lunch. Out. There was no McDonald's, nothing anywhere. If you were lucky to find a gas station that might have some crackers or drunk or something in. Oh, no. So, and that's what happened. We well, stopped at a gas station. <laughs> about how many kids you think were on? Were oh, probably on about 50 of oh. us all together. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, well, you stopped at a gas station and that's... And Got a cold drink or some crackers. Of course, by that time, everybody was just starving to death. Yeah. And it was late afternoon. So uh, we got back down close to Cross City, just south of Perry, and one of the buses broke down. Oh, no. <laughs> one of the buses broke down. So they had to call to Brooksville. To no the, AAA back then either? No, I don't know. <laughs> about that but um they in the co telephone conversation they were sending a bus up there to get us well that was the plan originally then they decided not to do that so we loaded all of the instruments on the bus that was broken down and everybody crowded up on the other bus we got into brooksville about it was late. It was sometime around midnight, 10, 11 o'clock. So we get home. I don't know how, maybe somebody, uh, I don't know how mom knew to come pick us up. But it was late. And after being up at 4.30 that morning, we got two or three hours sleep. And then mom called. She says, time to get up, girls. 
<laughs> you got to go to school. So my sister and I were the only two students out of the whole band that were in school. Oh. <laughs> oh. So anyway, that was an adventure. <laughs> That's a great story. The church across the street from the school was a vital part of the community. If you weren't at school, you were at church, and that's where all of this socialization went on. And uh, and you saw the same people, and moms got to discuss the things that went on in their homes during the week because I believe in just before we moved to Spring Lake was the time that uh, electricity first came to Spring Lake. So there were no telephones, and uh, the school and the church were the place where you exchanged news and caught up with everybody's family activities, and the kids played and and fought, <laughs> as kids do. <laughs> Go back to the time during the World War II. Um, I don't remember being that much affected myself personally by that war, but I did know that my mom and dad had to be involved in all the rationing that went on there. Um, you had to have, you even had to have ration stamps to get shoes and uh, things like sugar and meat. And my dad was a farmer, so he had to have special compensation or in the stamp for uh, fuel and for tractor tires and all that sort of thing. And so uh, we didn't come to Brooksville much. We were really isolated uh, out there because of the fuel and the tire situation. And so the only time that anybody came into Brooksville was if, if my dad had some um, equipment failure and he had to come in to get something there to continue on with his day's work and um, grocery shopping and things like that, things that we needed that we didn't grow in the garden. Uh, we came to town on Saturday afternoon to get that and that's when another place where people that knew other folks in the area other than Spring Lake we sat on the courthouse square on those steps, and everybody visited and shared their information that they wanted to share. And uh, kids played. The courthouse was not kept locked at that time, and so the kids were all over the place. <laughs> and uh, I was too young to be involved in uh, anything about the uh, air base that was out here at the present Brooksville Airport. Um, but I had some cousins that were old enough, and, and later in my working life, I worked with a, a group of girls that were old enough to date some of the airmen that were out there. And I love to hear their stories about um, being on, they evidently they had um, a schedule for the Civil Air Patrol because they watched airplanes uh, going back and forth all over the place, and so the, the some of those girls were old enough to be involved in that, and that was done from the top of the courthouse and. Uh, there were some pretty good stories told about things that went on besides watching for airplanes right. up there, too. Right, which, right. I mean, that's typical of young people, right? <laughs> the only thing that really affected me about that time was my dad was a farmer. And he had cattle and pigs. Well, the cattle were easy enough to contain on the property, but pigs like to get out. And so he put up um, um, uh, an electric fence around the area where he had the pigs housed. And of course, that required an electric connection. 
and the terminal box he put on our the front porch of the house we were in and it's it was a pulsating thing it was off for a few seconds and on for a few seconds and this terminal had a little bulb on the top of it. It was red. It would flash red and off and red and off. My father is a full-blooded German man, okay? So there was rumors going around that the, the, the countryside for a while that that old German man was sending radio transmission to the enemy. And that made me mad. I did not like folks talking about my dad that way because I knew it was not true. Yep. There was a, a training base in Clewiston, Florida, where a British airmen came over to train with the American uh, instructors. And they, their training route was from Clewiston to Valdosta, Georgia. Uh, so one Sunday afternoon, it was on February the 18th, it was my mother's birthday, and it was in 1944, 1945. Um, a group, they, they all flew in a group, and one of the planes, as it came over my dad's property up at Spring Lake, um, kind of faltered and fell behind, and we watched it, and it circled around and went south towards Spring Lake. And then it came back around and getting lower and lower and lower. And it crashed in the, the southeast corner of Spring Lake Highway and Old Trilby Road, which was maybe 200 yards from our house. Wow. And so um, everybody in the neighborhood went running down there to, you know, to see if they could help and so forth. So so my dad took our car down there and I have two had two sisters and my mother. And so everybody was wanting to go. So we had the, the British student in our car. We had no telephones, so there was no way to call any emergency. Uh, help so you you just did it yourself right and so this student pilot was in the back seat of our car and dad and mom and my two sisters were in the front and dad said you charlotte you get in the back with him so here i am and he's bleeding all over the place and and the dad said as we got closer to town he says uh is he's is he still alive, Charlotte? And of course, I was 11 years old. What did I know? And But he was conscious, and he says, I'm not dead yet. <laughs> so we came to the hospital, and uh, my mother had, had taken a, a first aid course, and so she was able to help the doctor uh get the bleeding stopped and so forth and so on. Whereabouts was the hospital at that time? It was on the uh, vacant property uh, down on mm, South 41 on Broad Street. That, that old hospital? Right there. The old hospital site, yeah. The next day, um, after I got home from school, I don't know why my mother wasn't there. She's usually there, but anyway, uh, two vehicles drove up in the yard, and one of them was an army car, and this British officer got out and asked me about where my father was, and <laughs> I said, well, he's he's down in the field running the tractor, and he would, the, the British officer would like to see him, and I said, well, he doesn't usually come home till supper time, and my dad's supper time could be 9 or 10 o'clock at night. And he said, he doesn't come up for tea? This is about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and that, that really struck me as strange to think that my father, my hard-working father that was up at dawn and 
they went to bed at midnight would come up in the middle of the afternoon for tea. Work there in 1953 was when telephones were all installed in the outlying areas around here. In, in Brooksville itself, the telephone's all along, but um, out past Griffin Road on 50 East, there were no telephones out there. And I'm, I'm not sure how far north and, and uh, south it went. But that was, that was an enlightening thing, especially for my mother. She just loved to talk on the telephone. <laughs> and it was the old um, type that your, your number was one ring, somebody else's number was two rings. And so if you wanted to call and somebody was on your line, you had to wait until they got through. And, and, but I was working at the telephone office at that time. So, and I'm not a telephone person anyway, so that didn't bother me. <laughs> the population has grown. And so that means more infrastructure, more highways, um, uh, when I was a senior in high school, it was starting to change then because uh, State Road 50 that we all take for granted now was not there. And, and what was there? Nothing. Nothing? You had to use all the old uh, circular streets, that, highways that went around through. Um, but in 1950, State Road 50 was opened up, and uh, how did the residents of Spring Lake feel about that at that time? I think they were glad to see it. They were glad to see it. But I know one lady um, th that uh, r really took a, a, a good approach into integrating with things. She had worked for American Express in New York City and came when she came down to Brooksville, of course, um, we didn't have the, the jobs mm -hmm. that some of these folks were qualified for. Some of them were overqualified for okay. the jobs that were that we had. And, um, and what year um, are you thinking about right now? It would have been in the late 60s, early 70s, somewhere like that. But uh, she would uh, come... And uh, during break time or lunch times, you know, uh, of course, we invited her to be among us. You don't want to, you know, that's just, that's just not. It's not Southern. <laughs> no, it's not. And uh, so she was always interested. We had some real good cooks. She was always interested in what people were bringing for lunch. Mm -hmm. And so we offered her, you know, to share. And what kinds that. of food? Um, well, what just you remember what leftovers, you, you know, a piece yeah. of fried chicken, maybe some potato salad or chocolate red velvet cake that somebody had made. And, and so she took that all in. And then as she kind of felt her way into the group and, and then she started bringing some things that uh, we did not. We weren't familiar with it, as well as showing them um, how how life was here. It expanded our horizons to good time. It was a good time to raise kids. What about what years uh, was this? Um, from fifty-five till seventy-six. Good time to raise a family in this area. Yes, it was a good time. The kids had the full run of uh, the property out there mm -hmm. at Spring Lake where we lived. That uh, Dad had not developed rolling acres then. So uh, your father was the one who developed mm -hmm. rolling acres out there? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. And um, so they had the whole run of the place, and it was just a lot of fun to, you know, they had cousins around and, and some uh, neighborhood children, too, and and uh, it, it was just a fun time. They could ride their bicycles. They could play ball. Our our front yard was always full of kids playing playing ball. <clears throat> and um, there was one girl in the group that was the best 
ball player of all of them. So when they <laughs> chose sides, Jennifer was the first one. Nice. <laughs> first one that was chosen. And uh, how do I see that where the county's going from here? I expect that we're just going to see more more expansion, especially if the economy comes back. We're going to be seeing more building and, and more businesses. And uh, and how do you see Spring Lake fitting into all that, the area where you grew up? Do you see it keeping its uh, country charm, or do you think it's... Somehow it really hasn't changed all that much. There are things here and there that have changed, and of course, uh, with the freezes that we've had taken out all the orange groves now mm -hmm. there are houses on that those properties mm -hmm. and the thing that i think is sad is these these folks uh coming from the city some of them work in tampa for fire department and police department and so forth so when they come up here and and are at home it's our area, I think, is becoming a bedroom community, and uh, they don't uh, get out and meet people. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people that would like to meet them are not welcome. So, uh, how how would you suggest people new to the Spring Lake area get out and meet um, some of the people that have you know made their lives there? Well. Um, we, we have some churches around. We have the schools around. The community building is Spring Lake. Have you ever been Is that there? the small rock building? Mm -hmm. I have not been inside. But you, you know where it is. Mm -hmm. It has been uh, designated a National Historic, or, or one of those. <laughs> National Historic Registry. It's been yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, they have a plaque that they'll be putting up as okay. soon as the county commission gets there part of the of the, the uh, routine done and um, they meet they have a community meeting there okay um, once a month which is a uh, potluck great and uh, you know if people would come mm -hmm. in fact some of them are beginning to, sh to come there's a small library in that building too which uh, isn't connected with with this library is just a community library that uh, that people wanted to have and they so the churches and the school systems and that little community uh, potluck is a great way for people to get to know the sure. people in Spring Lake and are some of the people that are attending these events or involved there's still some of the older families that have been around for a while there's not very many of us around anymore but yes uh -huh. 